Ladies and gentlemen, I am bringing you today Ecalypso versus Grunch, Protoss versus Zerg on Axiom. Last time we saw Grunch on this map, he was in this spawn in the top right, and he crushed Hapsea's Protoss in the bottom left. But it's Ecalypso this time around, so let's see what happens. Grunch, are you going for a seven pool mime? No, okay, just a little bit of a delayed worker. No worries there. This is Cosmonarchy. Beyond Brood War, perhaps? That could be our new tagline. You never know what happens. But, uh, however, I will mention that uh, this is very much not like Brood War in some ways, and of course very much like Brood War in other ways. So, the guys who are pure Brood War aficionados who think that Brood War can never get better and it's the best it's ever been and yada yada yada. Well, hey, uh, we've got something for you, uh, but it's very different. So, you're gonna have to hold, you know, hold your applause, figure things out later, you know? Take some time to get used to the differences because there are a lot of differences. And if you're somebody who wrote off Brood War or just feels like it's not the uh, not all the hotness, not all the rage, check it out too because maybe it does some things that you uh, wish Brood War had. You never know, man. You never know what you might find when you come into this g custom game built within the engine of Brood War. Ecalypso is looking to find his opponent. He's going to see that Grunch has gone for this customary hatch on the ramp. Uh, this is something that safe uh, openers do. It's, it's pretty safe against pretty much everything. You can go low ground hatch, but then you're you know vulnerable to rushes. Uh, we'll see if that's something that Ecalypso wants to do. It looks like he's going for Vespine. You can harvest that directly from the geyser. So he's gone for his customary gateway first. The pylon is obviously smaller than the normal uh, Brood War pylon because it no longer, we don't have supply in the game. So the numbers you see in the top right are workers over military. Uh, so obviously there's no military units yet, uh, but when this Dracodin pops out, we'll actually get some. Pool follow-up here for Grunch. He's sticking off the uh, gas harvesting, so able to uh, afford that. Stolen a mineral field. This thief. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. Dracodin on the way for our boy. That's uh, not a Dragoon, it's a Dracodin, and you can tell it's not a Dragoon because it actually turns. Oh my god. Beautiful. The other thing that's uh, worth pointing out here is that with this pool, uh, Grunch will most likely just try to push out with a couple pairs of uh, Quasilisks, a new Zerg unit that is sort of like a... It's like kind of like a it, it, you would imagine if a, there was like a light version of the Hydralisk that was it, related to the Zergling. That's kind of what the, the Quasilisk is. So you'll see it pop out here momentarily. And because it was a Dracodin first and not a Legionnaire, there can't be any pressure moved out over here. However, there is a pylon being dropped. So if that's not canceled, uh, Ecalypso... Uh, he's probably just going to end up having that uh, destroyed by the first couple quasis. So, indeed, it is not cancelled. Although, he did look back at it. Maybe he was a little too slow there. I'm sure he'll post in the comments if he meant to cancel that or not. So, this will, this won't last too long. You can see the quasis in action. They come on over here and start to uh, tickle this pile on to death. He actually uh, pulls back these quasis so as to not show exactly how many he's made, which is pretty good. And in uh, Cosmonarchy, unlike Brood War, vision updates really fast. So you'll, you'll notice that as these units move, the vision is updating at their periphery because you uh, like th there's no longer that variable rate of, of uh, vision update that happens sometimes. So, okay, well, the pressure is on. <clears throat> Low ground hatch being made here by Grunch. He doesn't have a great positioning on his Zethra cores. Something that I've noticed that Zerg players are doing is they are indeed burrowing the units. Because even though you can know that they're burrowed, and you can reveal them if you step on them, like that kind of negates the range here, right? So he's going to just wait for the Circuit to finish. That's going to prompt Ecalypso to fall away. Did a little bit of harassment. There was some hemorrhaging of uh, four Quasilisks, I think, or maybe only three. Either way, still uh, a bit rough for our boy here, Grunch. He's uh, already feeling the burn. He's going straight to the Hydrath Den off the back of that. He does have a decent number of Zethra cores, and that is going to force the, the Dracodins back. So this is where the matchup is going to turn in terms of who has pressure. Because Grunch decided to go for a lot of military units, and so he's down five workers. But that will change over time, because he's Zerg. So he's got the you know three hatches up, and he's going to start transferring some workers down there. Uh, the transfers, by the way, are a little bit slow slower. Actually, he doesn't have full saturation in his uh, main mineral line there, so he doesn't need to transfer it. Uh, we've significantly improved worker wandering, so they don't, uh, they're do not they not nearly as inefficient now. So here comes the attempted surround with the Zeths. A couple of them have already gone down. Ecalypso needs to micro his Dracodins a little bit better than that, because the Quasilisks are in hot pursuit. And while they don't do a crazy amount of damage to the Dracodin due to its two armor, they will deal a lot more sustained damage than the Zeth. But with the front line now taken out by Ecalypso's forces, it should be easy to hold. And there were some follow-up units, but it was just, uh, it wasn't anything too significant, right? It was just some Quasilisks, and they really struggle versus armor. 
So only picks one Dracodon. On paper, that looks pretty bad for the Zerg player, but think about what they've been able to do behind this, right? Get up to even worker count, use their bases, uh, stop the enemy from being able to just easily expand himself uh, without taking a little bit of a, a hit to the military count. And maybe making him panic a little bit, right? You know, flooding in with that many units. And he's got a lot more Zets. He wants to try again. I don't mind this idea. It's certainly keeping your units on the side of the uh, the base, right? The enemy side of the base. But something else that Grunch could definitely do here is uh, go for an extra hatch. Because he's got a lot of excess money. And maybe not enough larva to actually spend it. So that's something worth pointing out here. 12 Zethercores, 4 Quasilisks. The Warden finishing is kind of big. Uh, but just, you know, it's a little bit more tanky than in uh, standard StarCraft. But still, it, it can fall very, very quickly. However, it looks like it's going to be enough to make Grunch uh, zone himself away there a little bit. He will probably take note of the Witness that is following him. That's the new name for the Observer. And uh, Zorkish Shroud coming. So Grunch going to use all the Tier 1 tech, starting to filter out a couple of Hydras into his army. And uh, yeah, he's going to see if he can just fall away now. A single Zethercore left behind, just a spot. And indeed, it does catch that there is an army move out. So Grunch has to be a little bit careful. He's going to go for an expansion. Okay, fast third base here on Axiom. Now, on Axiom, you can obviously, the Kagra will spread around to here. And then you can put down your Kagrins, your, uh, you know, static defenses, right? Let's see what you can do there. Is that just spotting, making sure no third base of his opponent? So he should know that, you know, he's roughly even, and he's been able to work her up a lot, you know, droll up as we call it, or drone up as you would call it in another StarCraft game. He's been able to, to build a lot of his workers, get them up there, and uh, he should be fine in that respect. He's also going to go ahead and upgrade his den. So Zerg have the ability to upgrade their structures into new structures that unlock units from old units, as well as some new units from the larva. So when the, th the Skiback Scab is done, which is the upgraded den, um, basically it's going to give them access to a uh, sort of anti, like a crowd controlling sort of flyer. Uh, the Skithrakor, but more likely, and as you see, he's already starting to make, is uh, he's just going to go for the Bactalisk. So a good tier one army for Zerg is definitely Zeth, Hydra, Bactalisk, um, because the Zets give you a little bit of a front line and stop the ranged units from, you know, going straight over. And they kind of like hold back the melee as well and um, force your opponent to kind of go for some kind of crowd control themselves if they want to efficiently get through it. And certainly that's uh, Eclipse is just going to go straight to the Ancestral Archives. It looks like off of his uh, third base, uh, he's also just planning on going for like a, yeah, Patriarch. Okay. He wants to be able to sustain through the fights. We'll talk about the Protoss Arsenal a little bit later too. Another hatch coming. We love to see this. Let's see. Grunch not harvesting from his ridge right now. Uh, also needs to try to saturate the gases and such in his main if he's going to really sustain the production of the, you know, Bactalisks. He's going for double Avaleth as well. So maybe he wants to go for... I don't know, a couple of transporting uh, maneuvers, or maybe he like tries to drop some stuff for harassment. Engram and many wardens coming up at the third base as well. Going to be more witnesses moving around. Yeah, he's actually got three witnesses out, so Ecalypso getting great vision game going. He, he sees the bulk of the Zerg army right here. We see over here that there's some quasis. Yeah, okay, it's going to be a double quasi drop. I like this play. Um, if they are able to, so they're they're both full. Of, you can see here in the bottom middle. However, there is a witness over here. So if they go that way, they'll be spotted. If they go this way, they'll be, yeah. It's like really hard to slip this net. So I do believe Eclipso will be uh, aware of this. Uh, we'll see if he actually pays attention to it. Yep, he just saw it. And you can click on the transports if you have a witness to scout them. And you can see, oh, they've got Quasilisks in them. So you can actually like uh, see what their cargo is if you have detection. Same as if the Avaloth flies over here, he'll see that a Patriarch is being made. So we've got a couple of gateways coming here as well to fill out Eclipso's rank. Let's take a look at his army, right? We've talked about the Zerg's army a lot. Uh, we do have some Zealots. The front line, not the greatest here. Can absolutely be focused down by enough... Uh, Bactyls, although I don't see that many. Okay, there's like a bigger army over here. He's gonna go in for an attempted surround. The Zorius is a really nice tank, but there was only one of them. So, not okay, here's another one coming in. I was gonna say, you definitely need a little bit more than that. Now, the Patriarch falls back to the defensive line, but because he wasn't attacking during that time, he wasn't allowing the front line to sustain very much. Now, the Engram deals AoE damage, as does the Patriarch, and it's not really being focused down right now. He's gonna go after the Patriarch instead, who has to fall back, but obviously it can because it's not static defense. Now, where are those drops? It looks like maybe Maybe Grunch forgot about them off towards like the 10 o'clock position on the map. And at the same time, I mean, he threw a lot at this place, but he can try to remax pretty fast as well. He needs to saturate his third base, of course, has some Zeths coming. Looks like these two quasis are going to regroup with everything else. And these, you know, overlords, right? The Avaleths are 
sort of idling over there by the uh, floated gas. Uh, you can use advanced workers that fly to harvest this stuff, and you can return them to the treasury because the neutral town centers, the treasury is like a Terran town center, um, and neutral town centers provide you with uh, a drop-off point. You can return to them. You can also return to your allies' town centers as well. We'll see that, I'm sure, in some team games later on when we uh, get to that stage. Are looking for 2v2 maps, that's for sure, so... All right, so that third base did get uh, did end up holding. Now, one thing that's kind of curious is that he went for a good surround. He got a lot of really nice engagements there from Grunch's perspective, but he also could have maybe like played with the force over here and then sent the bulk of his force into the natural. And maybe he could even have set up for that secondary flank that was like up here at the time. He could have maybe brought that here and then attacked into the natural, forcing these units to respond, and then you know pincered them from this side too to try to go for a surround that way. So I'm just saying it definitely could have been a thing. He seems to have forgotten about the uh, Avalets still, though. I guess he moved them a little bit, so he does know that they were there. And the witnesses have not actually seen them yet, right? So uh, it looks like a there's a couple of wardens over here. We're, we're in a pretty good spot on that front. Okay, Iral Iris coming on down. And a, a decently, decently sized Zerg army is going to be over here. But we have three patriarchs now, when before we only had one. And a lot more zealots as well. So the sustain is going to be there. Um, I don't see a crazy number of Hydras with this army, and that's really going to be your main DPS as well. But let's see. I mean, he's got a lot of Zets. It just feels like he's not going to be able to get too far with it. And so here we go. Charging on in. He's going to see if he can maybe try to focus down the, the front line before the Patriarchs can provide too much sustain. That's what the Hydras are here for, right? However, they're not really going to be able to do that. And I think it's down to the fact that there were only maybe like eight Hydras with that attack wave. Uh, so definitely an opportunity there for Grunge to increase that count if he wants to do it. He's also attacking at the same time as he's teching, and that means that he spent a lot of money on the tech, but then wasn't really able to do much. So now he's got to start setting up some emergency defenses, and it feels like he tried to do a little bit too much at the same time, right? Like trying to mitigate his opponent's growth and uh, also at the same time um, teching and growing himself in power. So his K-Grants are going to come up here, but there's absolutely some kill pressure here from Ecalypso. He's going to charge in, and I don't know if the, how many of these circuits are going to finish. This front one's already dead, and the rest of the attacks are going to come in. He's on top of some of these rally points as well, and in the bank, we do have four Lachizalisks, but there are still witnesses here to detect, and yeah, Grunch is going to have to GG from that. The back and forth ends up favoring the Protoss in that situation. Uh, too many fights where the Zerg ended up leading off a lot of their units. And I really think that, yeah, you know, it's funny because the last game we saw Grunch, like I mentioned, he was able to destroy Hapsea. Um, It was a, a well-fought sort of back-and-forth match, but also kind of a short one like this one. And what ended up happening in that one was that Hapsea was, like, trying to posture aggressively, but he had 80 workers, and his opponent only had 50. And in this case, we had Grunch kind of doing a similar thing, where he had a tech advantage, or was going to get a tech advantage uh, by waiting for that Iral Iris to finish. And yet he tried to go aggressive and attack, when he was also kind of like waiting for a power spike. And his one of his first move outs as well, not, not technically his very first one, but one of the first ones that he moved out with, where it was pure Zeth and Quasi, where it was just like the tier one units, the basic ones, was when his Hydrath den was finished, but he hadn't finished making any Hydras. So that's another thing. It's like maybe playing around those power spikes that you get when you access additional tech and start filling those extra units into your sort of army composition would have served him a little bit better because he was definitely in a position to punish Ecalypso for being maybe a little bit lax with his positioning and not keeping too much information. Like, he had all these witnesses everywhere, but he didn't really preempt those attacks by, like, taking more aggressive positions that would have asserted control over that whole sector of the map for the Protoss player. I'm thinking, like, the ramps and the valleys and stuff on Ecalypso's side of the map uh, could have been more proactively set up there. So Grunch had an idea to punish, but he didn't have the right composition at the time or the concentration of units when he did have the right units so anyway a little bit of learning there uh of course we'll be back with more cosmonarchy casts in the near future i'm guessing that we're gonna hop into some longer ones pretty soon too so stay tuned uh subscribe if you haven't already you know the drill we'll pump these numbers up we'll keep this project going and this game this one this this custom game built within starcraft one yeah it's it's only going bigger so join us